Um, last weekend, I went to see The Favourite, um, the big contender at the BAFTAs this year, and the UK's top Oscar contender. Um, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily a fan of the director, Yorgos Lanthimos, but I have seen a couple of his previous films, and I really did like the the kind of world view he has, looking at these very hermetically sealed worlds, like in Dogtooth and The Lobster. And the delight he takes in just pulling them apart and seeing what happens when these people are forced outside of their comfort area. So we have with the favourite, the story of Queen Anne and her favourite, um, Sarah Churchill, Lady Marlborough. Um, uh, Marlborough was effectively running the country, whereas Anne was content to play with her rabbits, um, binge eat. She is a quite a sorry figure, to be honest. But um, when her cousin comes to court, she sees an opportunity to better herself and regain her lost aristocratic standing by inveigling herself and replacing her cousin in the Queen's affections. It's, to begin with, the dialogue is so crisp and clear just cuts through any idea that this might be a staid period drama. Um, it's the <laughs> it's the only uh, period drama I've ever seen that uses the C word more than once, um, and it's fantastically acted. Um, Olivia Colman is apparently a cert to win the Oscar for Best Actress, um, but Rachel Weisz and particularly Emma Stone I thought were also absolutely superb. It's a brilliantly acted film by all three leads. Um, and it looks gorgeous. The The photography is uh, it, it's so rich it, it captures the environment um, so perfectly and it makes it feel very enclosed. The decision to shoot a lot with fisheye lenses creates an almost goldfish bowl effect, like the characters are trapped inside this world. Um, but there are, there are scenes where um, Stone's character, Abigail, is watching um, her cousin and the Queen have sex. And it's lit by just her holding a candle close to her face. And it's absolutely exquisite. It's like a, it's like a Rembrandt. Um, the failure, and it's not a big failure, but it's an important one, is that even though the characters are interesting, it is the film is so misanthropic and so... Grim is the wrong word, but it's... <laughs> it has... It, it's, it's taking such pleasure in showing you such awful people. All three of, all three of them are awful people. Um, it's quite hard to engage emotionally with what's happening because you just want to leave them to it. <laughs> Great though the dialogue is, fascinating though the characters are, the whole situation is so repellent, and I think it's meant to be, I hope it's meant to be, um, that it's it's hard to really get engaged with it in the way I did with The Lobster particularly, because it was such an emotional story. The, the fact that it was all about sublimating emotion made it so much more heartfelt. Um, and Dogtooth, in the same way, it was all about sublimating emotion. Here, that's not the case. It's about secrets more than anything else. It's about keeping things from other people rather than keeping things within yourself, perhaps. Um, so although it has this brilliant script, although it has this terrific direction, although it has this beautiful photography, and it's an impeccably produced film, it looks and sounds gorgeous, and it deserves to win every technical award that it's up for. It's not quite there for me. For me. You might think differently. You might love it. In which case, fantastic. And I'm glad you were able to enjoy such bleakness more than I did. <laughs>